Good morning, uh, friends, uh, ladies, gentlemen, members of uh, AMA, and a lot of students that I see. I welcome you this morning to this program, which is a seminar, a pa panel discussion, and a interactive talk and session on the power of private equity, uh, and specific to the small and medium enterprises. Friends, as you are all aware, uh, Gujarat, we belong to a very, very large industrial uh, segment under the small and medium enterprises, host of uh, industrialists in this segment, and uh, doing rather well. However, uh, it is quite surprising and uh, noteworthy that in spite of this very large uh, in, uh, presence of the small and medium sector, which probably I would say is the largest in India from all the states uh, in this category, we have a very, very small presence of the private equity investment in this category. And um, I was just talking to Nipam Bhai while we were organizing this program that, you know, it's quite surprising and um, intriguing why this is so. And, uh, you know, as a part of our discussion, I have this feeling that, you know, we Gujaratis basically uh, not that we are not initiated to this uh, concept, but uh, we are very apprehensive. There's a lot of ambiguity in our minds. There's a lot of doubts and inhibitions, primarily because of which uh, probably, you know, we are shying away from this. And that's precisely why here at AMA we thought that this is a very, very fit subject to have a seminar or interactive session so that, uh, you know, we could invite these wonderful speakers here to share their knowledge on this field, on this subject, and initiate us all. Because um, I think the small and medium in, uh, industries' uh, prime support would be investors like these, you know, who would help you go from this step to the next. And uh, having knowledge of what's available to you from them would be very important. And, uh, you know, um, I, I also think that, you know, there's a lot of fear and doubt in the minds of the Indian, or uh, the Gujarati investor that what if, you know, what if uh, there's an investor who's invested in me and I don't remain my own boss, I am answerable, I, you know, go through a very, very uh, awkward situation if things go sour, not just with the investor, but in my industry itself. So... Uh, I thought this is a very nice program being organized, and I would give a lot of credit and thanks to Nipambai for organizing this, inviting all these wonderful speakers from the various uh, PE firms, uh, coordinating the subjects that they should share their knowledge and data with us. And uh, thanks a lot, Nipambai, for this great job. It was a horrendous and large job that you did, and it seems it's worked out all very well. I'd also like to thank uh, the wonderful speakers who have agreed to come here and share uh, their uh, co corporate presence as well as their knowledge on this field with us. Uh, uh, specifically, I'll just name a few. Danpal Bhai Javeri from Everstone, Tarun Sharma from uh, NEA, Akash Jain from Creador, Ashish Agrawal from India Alternatives, Mahesh Parsuraman from Amicus Capital, Sanjay Randar from GVFL, Archit Gupta, Anchit Gupta from Samara Capital, and Sanjita Modi from Access PE. Thanks a lot for taking out the time and coming and uh, being here with us this morning. I'm sure you will help make this a wonderful session. Welcome everybody, and may I request uh, Nipambai to take the program ahead. All the, all the guest speakers today, my colleagues at AMA, friends. First of all, I'm extremely happy to see this August gathering of uh, some wonderful investors, uh, some very illustrious industrialists and entrepreneurs, some uh, uh, pretty prospering, very fast prospering enterprises as well, and some uh, very highly valued advisors. The, uh, the today's seminar is basically to share our views, and we are going to have the view sharing from these market investors here, as well as the entrepreneurs who have successfully leveraged private equity 
for their own growth plan. Friends, growing up and scaling up, you know, that is the biggest challenge any small and medium enterprise would have. And particularly when that enterprise is a fast-growing enterprise, then the biggest challenge is the gap between the growth opportunity that they would have and the internal resources to raise the risk capital that they would have. So that gap is required to be breached. IPO is a far cry for them. And if they, if they depend only on their internal accruals as a risk capital, then they are limiting in a high, I mean, highly limiting the opportunity to take the uh, growth to the next level. Now, therefore, the private equity plays, therefore, a critical role, and that comes in as a critical friend in need, particularly when you are looking for the growth capital as an SME. By its very nature, friends, the SME is, uh, you know, a very fragile, in a very fragile state of business. They are still small in size, high in risk, susceptible to uh, various market conditions and geopolitical conditions as well. Their processes are still in the process of being developed and strengthened. The operational challenges are still not fully met. And under the circumstances, you know, the private equity pr would probably the best bet to avail the growth capital. Just to give an overview, and I'm just setting the background and leaving the rest of the things to the friends here for the rest of the day, but giving the background of the industrial, uh, uh, the private equity climate, you know, globally, there has been found a direct correlation between the advent of private equity sector and GDP, the national economic growth. U.S. has been uh, one of the most developed private equity market. And as per the studies in U.S., 18 plus percent of GDP is generated by PE-backed companies. If they compare the PE-backed companies with the non-PE-backed companies, they have surpassed and outperformed the non-PE-backed companies in terms of the revenue growth, earning growth, exports, and not only that, but they have been found to be very early adopter of the governance practices, the good governance practices. Not only that, they have been one of the, or some of the finest and the most rewarding employers, the pe back companies have been found to be one of the most rewarding employers across the planet. Now, with reference to that, if we look at India, and then particularly Gujarat, I think those numbers will find the genesis of this very event there. Gujarat has uh, drawn or attracted a very minuscule 1.5% of the total 44 plus billion of private equity that as a country we received in last three years, 2014, 15, and 16. And so that is one thing. And the question is why? Why just 1.5% when Gujarat has emerged as one of the fastest growing state in the country? There is some mismatch somewhere. Secondly, Another very interesting figure and the fact which, uh, you know, takes our focus to the SME, and that is out of the total $100 billion of private equity that has been invested in our country in the last 16 years, from 2001 to 16, more than 50% of that investment has gone to the companies with the annual turnover between $2 million to $125 million. So precisely, say, about 10 to 600 crore top line companies have attracted more than 50% of private equity. And that takes our focus to SME, that that is a sweet spot even the investors are looking for. So in a country like India, which is made up of MSMEs, I think the private equity can be one of the biggest source of the risk capital, which is again at the core of generating the growth capital and supporting the future growth. With these objective friends uh, today, uh, the object of this seminar and the event is that we want to understand from the 
investor speaker here, uh, the private equity investors here, that exactly what they are looking for uh, when they are taking their investment decision. What kind of role do they play with their investing company? And on the other hand, we also want to try to dispel some unfounded, unwarranted fear or apprehensions uh, that could be, you know, uh, you know, causing the the kind of uh, reluctance or hesitation in minds of the entrepreneur, or sometimes delay the decision in inviting private equity, not taking it at a right time. So that is the objective. I hope we can achieve that objective, uh, you know, at least in some meaningful manner today. Uh, in order to make the best use of uh, three and a half hours today, we have eight investors speaking today, seven entrepreneurs who have successfully leveraged private equity, sharing their experience. So we have tried to make use of the best time and we have done away with the formalities of introductions and uh, felicitations uh, to save the time and in order to make it up, we have given the detailed introduction of each speaker in the booklet that you have in your seminar kit. You also have the question sleep in your kit so again, in order to save time, please write down your question. The whole event, uh, we have uh, organized some Q&A sessions uh, at regular interval. Uh, but in order to save time to make it the most productive, please write down your questions, write down the name of the speaker to whom you want to ask the questions and your name so that, and give to one of the volunteer who would be there in the aisles. Uh, we will take those questions in the Q&A sessions as well. Uh, the sessions has, uh, uh, the, the, the whole event is in, divided into two parts. Part one, technical session one, we have uh, earmarked for the investors to come and speak here, uh, divided into keynote and panel discussion. Uh, that panel discussion is again going to be moderated by uh, none other than our Sunil Bhai. And uh, the next session is we are inviting the entrepreneurs to share their experience, again keynote and conversation panel discussion, very informal conversation here. Uh, so uh, let's hope we get the best out of it. Uh, and with this, uh, I, and of course, yes, uh, post that we have networking dinner on the same floor, uh, networking lunch on the same floor, room number 14 and 15. Please, uh, uh, you know, have your lunch and plenty of opportunity to network with the entrepreneurs and the investors during that session. So uh, I would request uh, Mossam. Uh, she's a director and NRS advisor to uh, take over. Uh, she's going to be the master of ceremony for the and the program coordinator for the rest of the day. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Nupam Shah. Good morning, everyone. I'll be your presenter today uh, for the seminar. Before we start, I would request everyone to either switch off their mobile phones or uh, put them on silent mode. So here, we would start with Mr. Dhanpal Javeri. Can I please request Mr. Dhanpal Javeri to deliver the first keynote address? An astute deal maker, Mr. Dhanpal Javeri, is the managing partner of Everstone Capital. He oversees the private equity business of the Everstone Group, an India and Southeast Asia focused private equity and real estate investor. With his words on leveraging private equity investment for growth, he'll be setting ground for today's seminar. Over to you, Mr. Javeri. Thank you. Uh, very good morning to all of you, uh, Tushar, Nipam, the co-panelists, and all of you gathered here. I think the challenge for anyone to come up and speak to an audience where one doesn't know much about the audience is really where do you start? And it's such a wide subject. Private equity could be, you know, I, I think one could spend hours and hours talking about it. And what I've tried to do in this presentation is really try and bring it down a little bit to the essence and the basics of what it's all about. And what it could mean to each one of you may be nuanced and slightly different, uh, but I hope I try and capture at least all the basics or, or the essence of what really this business, this investment, or, or this um, means of raising capital for you is all about. So it's really, you know, it's, if you think about it at the, at the core, Capital is what it drives any business. It's one raw material ingredient without which really you can't grow businesses. There are very few businesses which have the ability to generate almost an infinite, what they call 
uh, source of capital just on the momentum of its own business. But uh, without real capital, it's very difficult to set up anything. What's happened over the last 20 years in India as private equity as a class has become more recognized is that we've seen over 100 plus billion dollars of capital being put into work. Most of this capital comes from outside the country. So we haven't seen the emergence of an Indian private equity investor really to that extent. We've had a few examples, but I would say maybe less than 5% of this capital really is India originated and 95% comes from uh, outside. The challenge is also that brings along with that is the fact that uh, it's a dollar resource. So we who are sitting on the panel out here, uh, we raise a capital from investors outside. Uh, they want their return in dollars. And as we all know, in, rupee tends to depreciate in the long term on an average, you know, 4 to 5% every year. So when we think about making returns, we are thinking in terms of dollars about how to make returns. <clears throat> but having said that, India's secular growth, the real GDP growth, what we are seeing, you know, the large consuming economy, uh, it's a very, very large domestic consumption economy. The fact that uh, we are from a macro, whether it be the fiscal as well as the monetary side, very stable. Um, the world sees us as a source of growth and therefore a source of making money. So I do believe that going forward also on a secular basis, we will continue to see more and more capital being put to work to India. And within the various sources of capital, private equity itself is one of the most stable sources. Uh, we've seen, you know, across cycles, whether India is growing at 10% or growing at 5%, private equity tends to come in in a much more, you know, I would say a reliable basis as compared to raising money from the IPO markets, raising money from, um, you know, other forms like FIs, secondary offerings, etc. <clears throat> Uh, in terms of um, what private equity brings to the table, it's not just cash, it brings a lot more than cash. It brings um, uh, what we call additional operational capabilities, an ability to strengthen governance, uh, ability to attract talent, and a host of other things. Nipam talked about some of these things, right, as to what private equity, the, the effect of private equity on enterprises and on businesses. Uh, it's been now, you know, McKinsey actually did a, a fairly detailed study uh, looking at the impact of private equity on businesses over a 15-year uh, period. And the findings are pretty much, you know, pretty, I would say, spectacular. Yeah? That in every vintage or every year where private equity has been put to work, and if you look at comparing that enterprise which received private equity with an enterprise which did not raise private equity, uh, you typically, in a two-year period after that, have seen the companies perform much better in terms of revenue, much better in terms of earnings. Uh, you see a lot more employment being driven. Uh, you see, you know, companies which have an exports component seeing better or higher exports. And finally, you also see them being, you know, better corporate citizens, you know, contributing a lot more to the national exchequer. And in a sense, um, it kind of say, you know, warrants a few things, right? That a company raising capital from a private equity investor gets a lot more than just cash and the ability to really fast track its growth and its objectives of what it wants to do over a five, seven, ten year period. <clears throat> so what's raising capital all about? Um, yeah, you could essentially go to your neighborhood bank, ask them to get money. Um, you know, you obviously have to do it with an identified objective, uh, why you're trying to raise the money, what are the, uh, what's right in terms of the amount, uh, what's the right in time to raise the money, and finally, are you also in some ways ready to raise the capital? So I think the four phases we all kind of, you know, I don't want to belabor this a lot, is really you've got to be prepared. It's a, it's a corporate activity which is going to be one of the most disruptive corporate activities for you. Okay, it's, it's, and I think most people go into processes being fairly underprepared. So think very hard, you know, plan properly and prepare well before you actually launch any process. Um, identify who you're really talking to. Okay, it's like selling your product or selling your services. If you just go out blindly and reach out to everyone, you're really, n what they say is, you're like a little bit of nothing to anyone, right? So you've got to be something to someone 
and therefore identify who that investor is. And today there's a lot of information available on the internet about the kind of investors who are there, you know, information about any one of us or others who are there trying to put money to work. Um, investors will try and validate the business, so you've got to think hard about how you're going to help that process. And finally, you know, it's not just about getting a term sheet and someone telling you this is the value, because from term sheet to closing is really where, between what I call the engagement and marriage, most of the problems really lie. Uh, <clears throat> expect to take at least, you know, I would say from the start, time you start thinking about it, to the time you actually raise the money, at least a year. In all probability, more like 18 months. I think I've seen some successful entrepreneurs in the audience, and I think I would encourage you to talk to them as to the time and the effort and the, the kind of work required to actually raise money. And this is even for successful entrepreneurs, I can tell you that. <clears throat> it's um, obviously, don't just have, obviously, while cash is a very important goal for you when you're raising capital, think about all the other things that you really need uh, along with capital, and therefore that will help you also determine who your right partner is. And finally, it's, um, it, it's really prepare yourself for failure. You know, after having done all of that, I can tell you the, we see, I'm trying to get, I think over the last five years I've seen maybe 1,500 proposals, and we've made 15 investments. And if you ask any of my colleagues on this panel, they'll give you a very similar statistic. So it's not an easy process. Be ready for failure, but don't be disheartened by it because I'm sure there's someone out there who wants to give you money. Um, you know, these are kind of, I would say, fundamental options. There are lots of things that you need to do, but it, the core is that do you have a business where if capital is deployed, okay, look at it from an investor's perspective, right? What am I looking at at the end of the day? I am looking at my money multiplying over a three to five year period. That's the horizon over which I want to put money to work. I want to see at least two, maybe three, maybe four times if I'm really lucky, return on my capital. I want to see that happen through growth and to a certain extent, you know, the governance, et cetera, improving the valuations of the business. And uh, I want to see evidence of that when I go into the business to evaluate it, right? So do that self-test on you first. That is your business such one that it can absorb the capital? Can it therefore then use the capital efficiently to create you know, a future uh, for the business which will, for me as an investor, create value for me? And then finally, you know, I also think about the fact that how am I going to get out of this investment? Because this is an illiquid asset class. So I have to think very hard that if I put money in this company, how am I going to get out? And is it an IPO? Is it a sale to another investor? Is it a trade sale of the business? And therefore, for you as an entrepreneur, you have to think hard about how you're going to get the investor the exit. You know, are you, if the investor comes and says that, look, five years later, I want you to sell the business, are you open for that? Right? If the investor says, look, you will have to, you know, give me some sort of a uh, option to basically sell it back to you. Or you, you know, is the business large enough and generating enough cash flows that the business can buy me out? You know, are you happy that I will go and sell to, you know, another strategic uh, partner? So these are all very important considerations you've got to think about because for us, it's almost before we get into, you know, a marriage, we're thinking about divorce. So keep that in mind. <clears throat> Lots of reasons, I've just listed out a few of the reasons why they fail. Trust me, everyone has their own story about why things work or why things don't work. I think a big chunk of it is just preparation. Just be prepared, think through all these questions. You don't have to go through the sufferings of a year if you haven't broadly answered all these questions for yourself. And if you as an investor completely, you know, think of yourself as an investor. Would you put a lot more money in your company at the price you're asking an investor to put in? And do you feel confident that at that price, for th that investment, you will make a lot of money for your investor. If you broadly feel that that's the answer you have and it's yes, go for it. Uh, this presentation is being shared with everyone, right? Okay, I'm com kind of aware of the time, so I don't want to take too much time on this. So. <laughs> Mahesh, I don't want to lose your glory also. So, um, I think there are a few advantages. I think the, um, what it gives you very strongly is a validation of your own business, right? that if an external investor is coming in to put money to work and has committed to put that and given you the capital, 
it's clearly a strong validation, not only to you, it's to your employees, to your customers, to your other stakeholders who are there, who kind of see, yes, that this is now a successful business, it's been able to raise capital, and clearly there's someone else who is backing that success with capital. Two is very clearly, it uh, also helps you continue to grow as a business, right? It gives you almost like, uh, you know, propeller fuel, right? It's, it's you're going from being a normal diesel or petrol run car to getting jet fuel to basically grow the car faster rate, uh, at a faster rate, yeah. Um, it's also a period where you will get a fair amount of media mileage and use that, I would say, use it very smartly. Right, because whether the process fails or succeeds, you want to be out there and known in the marketplace. So think smartly about how you use the capital raising process to also get some free advertising for your business. Um, it's also something that I believe is, uh, at the end of the day, um, allows you to kind of look in the, you know, in the mirror for someone to give you critique on your business, good, bad, ugly, take it all. You know, don't, don't reject it outright think about what people have to say, because I think the advantage we as investors have is that we see hundreds of businesses, so we have a perspective from outside as to what your business looks like to an outsider. Okay, so sometimes we just look in the mirror and we think we're the most beautiful or the most handsome person out there, and that unfortunately is not necessarily the fact, right? So be prepared for that feedback. Uh, valuation, I think this is where things fall off very quickly, okay? Uh, don't be Donald Trump here. I'm going to aim this high, and then if I get here, I know I want this price, so therefore, you know, I've done a great job. You know, in today's day and age, unless you are an internet company in 2014, you're not going to get capital on that basis. Okay, because if you aim very, very high, you're unrealistic, you will put off potential investors. They won't talk to you. They won't take the process forward saying, that, look, it's a waste of my time, because I'm never going to agree a number with this person. You know, because if that is the impression that person has of that of the business of the value of the business you know let's not waste our time so think very carefully okay because you will have to make the first you know kind of move if the investor makes the first move you know it's going to be something that you may not be most happy about um, expecting to raise capital quickly i talked about the timeline um, don't again you know it's a fairly expensive process because it does distract you from your business you're right, you have to, as a founder, the owner, the entrepreneur, have to spend substantial amount of time with potential investors. Uh, so it's that time value of that money, plus it's an expensive process because you may have to appoint bankers, you may have to appoint accountants, lawyers, all of that stuff. Yeah. So think about all of that. Finally, just to give you a perspective of us, right, because I think um, I was told that you can't have Everstone on these slides. Uh, so this is actually about the Everstone approach, just to give you, you know, because I think it's the way I talked about it. You need to know whom you're dealing with. Uh, so we, we are a India Asia Focus private equity investor. Uh, we started 10 years ago, uh, but like any business and any entrepreneur in this, in this um, you know, auditorium, uh, we also are essentially entrepreneurs, right? We started life, we raised our first fund, then went on to prove ourselves, and over a period of time, we've now, you know, established ourselves as a, as a private equity investor. Mahesh is, you know, early on in that curve. He's just raised his first fund. Congratulations, Mahesh! Uh, and the others over here, Samara and uh, NEA, obviously, are doing a phenomenal job with their funds. Uh, um, our approach is more control-oriented. We tend to be, we like to be masters of our own destiny. So what we do is, mostly, is we buy businesses. If we don't buy, we actually build our own businesses. Uh, we've built financial services companies, we've built food companies, we've built renewable energy companies, we've built uh, you know, cosmetic companies, all kinds of different businesses. Um, and uh, our, our basic DNA is that when we put capital to work, we are deeply involved. So we do minority deals. We will work with some high quality entrepreneurs to partner with them and put money to work with them and own a minority in the business. But in every situation, whether it is where we buy a business or we build a business or we partner with someone, uh, we will be deeply involved. Uh, I think while most entrepreneurs are pretty good at understanding the core of their business, as businesses grow, they become much more complex and much more difficult to manage. 
where you can't manage everything through an SMS or th through a phone call to a, a colleague in the business. You need to build stronger systems, processes, you know, literally as, as you start delegating, the problem is also that the responsibility and the accountability also starts getting a bit diluted. And I'm sure all of you face that, right? That if you give your factory manager responsibility, is he really producing the goods at the quality you want? Or as your sales guy is going out in the market, is he really selling as hard as you want him to? And what happens when he has to employ five sales guys? And what happens when those five sales guys you know, need another 15 people to support them? So that whole web of complexity as it increases at organization scales is where we think as partners and having seen and worked and kind of you know, participated in, in businesses which have grown, can provide a lot of that experience, wisdom, and to a certain extent, you know, the capabilities. So think about yourself as the guys who are really the F1 driver, and think as a private equity guy who can really work with you, as a guy who's the engineering team, the analytics team, the, you know, the guy who's managing the finances, all of that stuff in a certain extent, being there to support you to create that value. And finally, um, like I said, the reason why we spend most of our time investing in buying and building businesses is because we want to be also a little bit more in control of our exits. You know, and that's another reason why we do that. Yeah. Um, I won't get into all of this. So finally, you know, uh, with that, I'm going to be around. Nipambai has made sure that I'm around to lunch and, you know, be happy to answer questions at that point in time. Thank you.